You're listening to an archived Cabral Concept podcast. After listening to this show, check out the most up-to-date podcasts available at stephencabral.com slash podcasts or search directly on iTunes. And now, welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Thank you for joining me on this training Thursday, where we're going to be going over why you should be following your Ayurvedic body clock to learn when to eat, exercise, and when to sleep. This is extremely important, and the reason is this, that really in our modern day society, we've fallen out of touch with all of the ancient base philosophies that really did help people get their life, their mental and body-based health back in order by following a certain set of rhythms and waves that our bodies naturally move throughout the day. Sometimes people feel a little groggy in the morning. Sometimes they get a second wind at night, which shouldn't happen. But Ayurvedic medicine explains these things. And so when people come into my practice and, you know, if I were to say to them, you know, how would you like to increase energy naturally? How would you like to improve your digestion? How would you like to stimulate clear thinking? How would you like your own body fat to be used as a fuel source and do that naturally? And what if I were to be able to help you get into a deeper, more rejuvenating sleep? I think most people would say yes, 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 yes to all of those questions. And the reason is this, is that all of us as humans, wherever we're at right now, we always want to turn it up one more notch. Meaning like we know our current normal But our current normal in most instances could be even a little bit better. Maybe just tweak it just a little bit more. Or maybe there's one part of our life, such as digestion, that's kind of suffering a little bit, but our energy is okay, our sleep's okay, our body transformation's okay, all of those things. So we can also tweak just individual things that might need a little help. One of the best ways to do that, honestly, is just to start to look at rhythms. I've talked about this so much. It's one of the things that I really do spend quite a bit of time talking about When someone comes in with any type of nervous system-based disorder, meaning like can't slow the body down, can't turn off at night, always moving, can't sit still, anxiety, kind of that low-level anxiety, that nervous energy, which can sometimes manifest itself as getting a lot of things done, but really what they're doing is they're burning their body out. So I absolutely do help with that. Anything nervous system-based, sleep, energy, stress, all of those great things, but also when it comes time to digestion because... If you are not digesting your food properly, there is most likely, besides a gut imbalance, meaning like candida overgrowth, bacterial overgrowth, poor digestive fluids such as hydrochloric acid, enzymes, pancreatic enzymes, bile, any one of those things or good probiotics, that besides that missing, a lot of times is people just literally do not slow down or time their meals correctly in order to properly digest and break down their food. So what I want to do today is explain a simple but very intricate system of the Ayurvedic body clock. And then I want to show you how this perfectly matches with what we know in modern day science to be absolutely true. Meaning that it's really scary how they knew 6,000 plus years ago in Ayurvedic medicine, all of this both mind and body wellness-based health. And how do they know it? Well, that remains to be maybe figured out in the future. But the truth is they were a lot more in touch with their own body. And so when we're looking at the Vedas or we're looking at any of the Ayurvedic-based sages and they figured out these rhythms, they work to this day. And the reason why they work to this day, even though it's ancient-based philosophies and ancient truth, is that a truth never goes out of style. So people ask me all the time, like, have your recommendations changed on this, this, and this? I said, no, because they're based on truths, meaning like they're based on Ayurvedic wisdom. They're based on natural eating, meaning like uh, plant-based nutrition, all of that different type of stuff is it's based on what humans were naturally meant to do. So let's go over those things now. I'm actually pretty excited for today's show because part of my thrust into 2018 is to teach more about Ayurveda and, of course, the body types. Now, today we're not going to talk about the body types, but we are going to talk about the vata, pitta, and kapha, not as a body type, but actually as a part of the day. And this may not make sense because you're probably saying, like, well, I thought the vata, pitta, and kapha 
were actually body types. Well, they're not. They are symbols that can be used for body type. They can be used for mental base. They can be used for times of the day. And here's why. Vata symbolizes air, so the ether in the air. Pitta is water and fire, but let's think of it more as fire, transformation. And kapha is more of the heaviness, the earth and the water, okay? So when you look at it that way, it does. It can be applied to anything. Like, okay, this situation is high vata, high chaos, stress in the ether, all of those things. Or this is getting an agitated. This is becoming more pitta. Or everyone's moving a little slowly after lunch, the kapha, right? So we can look at it that way. Or you're feeling like you're in a kapha-based state, a sluggish, slow-based state. So let's look at that. And let's look at the actual, I want to really bring this in with functional medicine as well. So hopefully this is a, you know, a, a new and exciting topic that we can talk about. All right. Here's the big thing. You look at the Ayurvedic clock in every 12-hour cycles, okay? We have a beginning part of the day, and then we have an ending part of the day. So I want to start with the beginning part of the day. Between 2 a.m. and 6 a.m., I know you might not say this is the beginning part of the day, but it does. Trust me on this one. So between 2 and 6 a.m., we're going to get a, that's the vata time of the morning. Now, what does that mean? Well, it means that this is when actually in modern day science, we know this is cortisol is starting to rise. It actually starts to rise right around 4 a.m., and starts to gradually rise and peak out right around when the sun is rising, somewhere between 5.30 and let's say 7 o'clock, depending on the season. Now, this is extremely important because in the vata-based state, the mind is very alert, meaning that the transformation during the pitta stage, which we'll talk about at the end, has already transpired, has already happened. Now, the body is starting to move from its transformation, detoxification, absorption state, and the mind is now getting ready for the day. The body's getting ready for the day. So the magic here is this, is that if you wake up a little before 6 a.m., you're waking up in the vata-based state, the high energy, high mindset-based state. And that's why, really, I have less fatigue now, believe it or not, when I changed my diurnal rhythm. And that's one of the reasons why I'm doing the show for you today, is that the way that you know, I followed nutrition, I followed supplements, I followed all these lifestyle things. But it was when I went to bed within a half hour of the same time every night and woke up within a half hour of the same time every morning, that really, I made a big switch. I honestly did. That is when my energy started to transform. In addition to everything else I was doing, yes, but that was a big part of it. So here's what I did. I started waking up. At first, I started waking up at 6.30 every morning. Now, that was better. That was better for me. But really, I made the best headway when I started to wake up between 5.30 and 6 a.m. And now I typically wake up right around 5.30 a.m. Monday through Friday. That will be 5 to 5.30. And then on the weekends between 5.30 and 6. So always within a half hour. So what this allowed me to do was wake up before the sluggish time of the morning, which is between 6 and 10. 6 and 10 is dominated by the kapha bay state. Kapha is the sleepiness, the heaviness. And that's why if you're constantly hitting the snooze button, you are increasing that grogginess. Now, the grogginess is going to come as well if you start to go to bed later at night and wake up a little bit later in the morning during that kapha-based state. Now, this is really important as well because here's the thing. If you do happen to be, let's say, 20 pounds, 30 pounds away from your goal weight, the kapha-based state, you're going to feel even more sluggish. Why does this matter? Well, it matters because this is going to be a great time of the day to increase or do some type of exercise to help combat that heaviness, to combat that kapha-based state. So if you're looking to burn body fat, if you're looking to rev up your metabolism, don't wait till it will naturally start to boost around 10 a.m. Actually begin to boost it yourself with a workout before uh, before you head up to work or maybe after you drop the kids off, come back home and do a little workout then. It doesn't have to be long, 20 minutes or so. That would be a great time to start boosting the sluggishness of kapha. It's why I also, once I wake up, I wake up before the sun. That's a big goal of mine. And then also, after I've had my quiet time ready for the day, I do my my body weight exercises. And that also moves that lymphatic system. It kind of shakes off that sluggishness. It's not a full workout. It's just five minutes of five different exercises. That's it. And then I I go ahead and I start my day. That energizes my body. Again, shakes off that sluggishness of kapha. But it's also why this is so important. Like Again, this is why we, as health practitioners, we have to go back and study Chinese medicine of Ayurvedic medicine. They all say the same thing. You don't want a heavy, heavy breakfast in the morning. You don't. And the reason is this, is that in the morning, the body's going to be more sluggish. The digestion is not going to be anywhere near peak. Not at all. Nowhere near it. 
So the heavy breakfast of the sausages and the bacon and the butters and all those heavy fats and proteins are not going to be ideal. We do want something sure as needed, meaning that I, that's why I also recommend a smoothie. Wintertime, you can add some ginger, some spice that smoothie if you want to. You can add a little bit of warm oatmeal if you want. Kaffa is cold and damp, sluggish, so that heat is fine as well. So that's, again, these are really easy things, and it, it all goes back to ancient wisdom. So those are great recommendations for the morning to get your body going. Again, if you're a Vata body type, the ectomorph, your mind's always running, then you don't need to stimulate anything more in the morning during that kapha time. You actually just enjoy it. That is your time to actually just enjoy into that slower state so that you're not too rubbed up too fast. If you're a kapha-based body type, could you do one cup of organic black coffee in the morning? Sure. If you're a vada, you don't need it. You don't, it's just not necessary because you're already in that stimulated-based state. Okay. So next, and again, I'm not recommending coffee. It's just if you're in a spot, you love coffee, it's your favorite thing in the world, a small cup of black coffee, especially after breakfast, so you don't get that stimulation from the caffeine, could be fine for that endomorphic body type, which is, again, more sluggish, okay? That's the larger body type. Not bad, just typically larger joints, bigger calves, thicker kind of chest, bigger wrist joints, all of those things, okay? Just a larger body type. Nothing wrong with it. It's a fantastic body type. Best for immunity, best for anti-aging, best hair, best skin, best nails, just different body types, different things. Okay, so next up, we have the pitta-based time. The first time pitta comes into the day, and that is between 10 and 2. What does that mean? Well, it means digestion is at its strongest. Fire is at its strongest. The sun is going to be directly overhead at around noon, 1 o'clock. Okay, this is the time when the body has the most transformation, the most catabolism really going on, and this is the time to take in ideally your largest meal of the day because your lunchtime meal will be when your digestive system is the strongest. This is a great time as well to just take a little bit of time after lunch to either maybe calm the body with a walk, to cool it down in any way that it needs to allow for that healthier uh, transformation of being able to break down the food you put into your body into really good proper nutrients. It's also why we, if you're even doing an intermittent fast, this is the time when you really should have that meal and why some people wait until the end of the day to eat their one big meal. That's not the ideal time. At no point in any part of history, any type of uh, natural medicine, have they ever said you should sit down at night, which we'll talk about in a couple moments, and have your largest meal of the day. I know that's what a lot of us do. We'll talk about what you can do to combat that, but this is not that time. And also, if you're going to have a salad, a big salad, if you're going to have a lot of roughage, a lot of hard to break down food, this might be the time to do that since pitta does dominate that type of digestive transformation. So that's a great time to do that. Okay, next up is From 2 o'clock to 6 o'clock, we are back now at our second time of the day. Now, this is the ending of the day. So we started the day with 2 a.m. to 6 a.m., the rising of the day, and now the setting of the day. Now, vata, though, is still where the body and the nervous system are at their peak, okay? So we're still at that peak time. We're kind of transitioning to that slower time again. Kapha is always the slower time. Vata allows for that transition, okay, transition air and ether being movement. Vata is always movement. So this is a good time to do a couple things. All right. If you are an, well, really any body type, but I'll say this. If you're an ectomorphic body type and you're looking to do your workout, this might be a great time to do some hatha yoga. It might be a great time to go for like a light bike, a walk. It might be a good time to do meditation, tai chi, anything that's calming for the body as well. But it's also an excellent time for the mental alertness as long as you did not eat foods that were incompatible with your body uh, during that lunchtime mode. Because this afternoon time can be, like I said, a great time. Vata is dominated by the mind as well of you doing a lot of your creative-based work. Maybe this is when you write. Maybe this is when you do a lot of your reading or research. I still do it to this day. This is a lot of time when I'm doing my reading is after lunch. It's also, I read at the gym. (laughs) I know that's very strange of me. Sometimes I do that. Uh, sometimes I'm listening to podcasts. Sometimes I'm listening to books on tape. I'm, I'm, I'm always reading or trying to learn, use that time wisely. But it's also it's not doing it like for any particular reason. I love it. That's why I do it as well. I don't want you to think like that this is my whole life and I'm always just doing these things to keep up. It is my whole life, but it's what I enjoy as well. So I'm using that time though to also try to take in new information because unlike the early morning hours when the mind might be a little sluggish in that kapha, the mind is fully alert or should be fully alert three o'clock, four o'clock, and right up until five o'clock or so when we're making our transition. 
as a kapha body type, this would also be a fine time to do a workout as well. You should be fully stimulated, meaning that kapha body type, that endomorph, maybe a little sluggish, maybe a little bit of overweight or hard to lose weight or hard to maintain the weight. This could be a great time for them to work out since they should have good energy at this time of the day. So this is really nice. One of those times that if needed, you could do an afternoon snack, but it should be light. So again, Vata is not known for the the best type of digestion. And that's often because the mind is in overdrive. You're more likely to be in maybe a little bit of that fight or flight or a little bit of that sympathetic nervous system, which is Vata is dominated by. And so use this time to maybe do like a green juice or my, my favorite, which is like a carrot juice and some ginger and some lemon, or you might do just do some berries, or maybe you're just doing some shake, uh, smoothie, an assi bowl, any of those great things, easy to digest, hummus, those, you know, like just whatever you like, but keep it light, keep it light. And the reason is that you're probably hopefully doing a lot of good work at that time. Maybe the kids are coming home from school, you're keeping them entertained and you're moving around, you're doing a lot of things. And, and this is not the time that you want to put a heavy meal or heavy snack into your stomach. Okay, so next up, we have the second time kapha enters into the day. This is when we should be turning things down. This is really important. I get a lot of questions, people writing in saying that, or even in my clinic, my office, that people are asking, oh, I start to get tired around six o'clock at night. And I tell them that is not abnormal. You do not want to be off the wall with energy between six and 10. That's the next kapha-based time of the day. Now, you don't want to be dragging. That's a different story. Dragging not having any mental or physical en- energy is a different story. But if you don't feel as stimulated as you did earlier in the day, well, congratulations, your diurnal rhythm, your diurnal rhythm, which I'm going to talk about in a moment from a functional medicine standpoint, is actually working. You should feel your body calming down. If you don't feel your body calming down, there's a huge issue. Because from around 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., it's okay to be a little stimulated. It's okay to be in that fight or flight in and out of it, not in it all day, in and out of it as things come up. You're in that sympathetic nervous system. You're in that catabolic system, but you need to start moving out of it by 6 p.m. at the latest. And the reason is this. That is the time that's dominated by more of the parasympathetic nervous system. Cortisol levels should start to be dropping at this point, if not have already dropped to almost below one. And if you do lab testing, you'll know what I'm talking about. I'll link up to some labs if you want to test your own cortisol levels throughout the day, which I find remarkable. I love that testing. It was the second test. I did that in hair tissue mineral analysis when I met with my first functional medicine doctor about 20 years ago. And that was an amazing test for me. It honestly, it blows my mind to now be offering that same test that I did 20 years ago that got me started to getting well. I mean, it was, it's unbelievable. I just love counting that story. But so that is the cough of time. Now, this is a little bit more sluggish. This is a little bit more of the heavy time. So would it make sense now to do a heavy meal at night? No, because this is the time when the body's slowing down. So if you're already prone to putting on weight, well, then this larger meal at night, larger meal at dinner would force you or cause you to put on more weight. Now, let's draw back for one second. You can get away from this by doing that meal, mainly vegetables, okay? Ideally, some cooked veggies in there, protein and a healthy fat, less starches. For the endomorphic body type that's looking to lose weight or keep the weight off. Now, Different story for the Vata body type or the Vata Pitta body type that's not looking to lose any weight, and they might even want to gain a little weight. They could add starches at night. Why? It would make it heavier, meaning like starch is heavier. It's a kapha-based food. That will then be anti-Vata, which will be calming for your body and would actually get you into a more relaxed state. So that's why I tell people that keto body types can put you more into that fight or flight because The practitioners, and it's not their fault, never understood how foods actually affect the biochemistry of the body. When you eat a starch, a carb, like a starchy carb, and it has some type of macronutrient in it that can then increase sugar, glucose, that will then improve dopamine and serotonin release, which then calms anxiety. It calms all of the fight or flight. It's the only food that does that. You can't tell me that protein's going to do that. It's not, nor fat. They can help keep you satiated, and that can help in its own right because of satiation. I agree with that, and they should be in your meal. But for the Vata body type, the anxiety, all that, a little starch is going to go a long way. So you can see that body types is really all about balance. It's not about one being best. It's looking at where you're at in life and then balancing that. For example, if it's December in Boston and it's cold, I talked about this on a couple Friday reviews before. 
I use hot sauce to balance the cold, to balance the mucus production of kapha or fire cider or a lot of ginger tea. But I would never do that during the summer when the summer is dictated by pitta and heat and my body gets hot, irritable. If I would ever do hot sauce during the summer, I'd be like an irritable madman. Like I would not be fun to be around because I'm already hot and aggravated, which is pitta. So now we need to cool that with kapha-based foods like anti-kapha, which is the hot sauce, is the ginger, the heat, the cayenne, the peppers, all of those things. Hopefully that makes more sense. So, but again, this goes deep and that's why today is just one episode. We're going to do a lot of episodes like this. All right. So now, and please do let me know if this helps. Like if you, if you liked this show, please let me know on Instagram, just go to instagram.com forward slash Stephen Cabral. And when I publish this show, which is episode 685, stephencabral.com forward slash 685. And again, it'll be on Instagram instagram.com forward slash Stephen Cabral. You'll see my post about it. If you like today's show, please let me know. I love your feedback because it means I'm on the right track with content. And honestly, my content is all about you. When people write in with suggestions, I do those suggestions. I really do. Like it's all about you and me trying to teach all of these things. That's hopefully what I can try to do to give back. I got well, I got my answers. Mentors taught me, coaches taught me, thousands of books taught me. Now I'm just trying to teach others. Like that's also what gives me purpose, right? So I feel good about doing it too. So please let me know if you can do it on Instagram. I would love that. If not, you can always just email in and just let me know if you enjoyed today's show. Always appreciate that. Okay. The last transformation of the day is between 10 and two in the morning. We already talked about two to six in the morning being Vada. Well, 10 to two, this is why this is going to blow the whole night owl out of the water. There is no such thing as late night eating as being healthy. And there is no such thing as being a night owl and staying up till midnight, one, two o'clock in the morning as being healthy. I did all of those things in my past as well. I did, but they're not long-term health. They're not. You can say, I do my best work at night and I'll tell you why. Between 10 and two, you will get a second wind. You'll get a second wind. And that's because it is the Pitta-based transformation time of the day. But just like you're supposed to wake up at six or right before, you are supposed to wake up. Now, again, this means you're getting eight hours of sleep, of course. You have to go to bed by 10, right? Ayurvedic times is that you are going to bed by 10 p.m., okay? Here's why. If you don't get into bed at that time, you risk the second win. You risk the increase in energy, all right? This will happen. The mind starts to maybe get a little bit more stimulated. You get a little bit more creative. But what's happening during this time is you're supposed to be You're supposed to have finished dinner already by six o'clock, seven o'clock at the latest. And then that's a couple hours before bed, all right? A couple hours before bed, the foods now move through your stomach. I talked about this a couple of days ago on episode 683, should you snack before bed? Check that show out. I gave the 1% of the population who should be snacking, everyone else should not. So between 10 and two, it is digestion again, but in a different way. Now, all the food you ate for the day, your body is using, it's breaking down. It's been doing that, I know, know the the whole day. But now it is extracting that nutrition and helping to rebuild your muscles, rebuild your bones, rebuild your immune system, every part of your body, every cell of your body. And your liver is doing its best and biggest work for detoxification. That means if you are not in bed from 10 to 2, that's why the more hours before midnight, the better. But if you're not in bed during those four hours, you are missing out on a window for pure detoxification, not any detox products, nothing like that natural-based detoxification of when your body's going to get its best work done. Those are probably the four most important hours of the night, okay? Between 10 and 2. If you can get to bed by 10, if you can sleep till 2, no waking up. If you can do that, you've already gotten four solid, the most transformative hours of the night. This is so important for me to try to reiterate. Now, this is extremely important because, again, if you know those night owls, you're missing those optimum repair hours. And also, What's happening as well is you might be eating later at night. This is definitely going to lead to then a mix-up in digestive system function. Why? Your digestive system should turn off as it gets dark out at night and only turn back on when it's light out. Again, we know this if we were to look back at common sense. And again, common sense is not very common. I didn't have it. Most of us don't because it's not taught to us. But if you think about it, if we lived outside, let's just say we're camping, right? No electricity. This is only a couple hundred years old, right? No electricity. We're camping outside. Are you eating when it's dark out? No, you're going to bed. And you're waking up when it's light out. I'm telling you right now, everyone would be get set right back into a natural diurnal rhythm if they camped outside for three weeks. There would be no night owls. There would no be no ridiculous eating at 11 o'clock at night. You'd already be at bed because the sun is waking you up, whether you like it or not, at five o'clock in the morning, six o'clock in the morning, or during the winter, maybe 7 a.m., okay? It is waking you up. 
There's no sleeping in, which means you're going to start to get tired then about seven o'clock at night, 12 hours later. This is how the world works. And then you would go to bed a couple hours later. We would go to bed by nine o'clock to 10 o'clock. Then we would wake up between five and six o'clock. The earth, the seasons, everything has already been planned out. We are humans that are part of the entire earth. We are a part of it. It is a part of us. We can't escape it by doing things that go against it because we have Modern electricity, we have computers, we have TVs, we have endless stimulation does not mean that that's healthy for us. Just because we can doesn't mean we should. I'm telling you right now, if you follow this diurnal rhythm, things in your life will change and they will really change within about three weeks. If you did this for a three week period of time, you go to bed by 10 o'clock, you wake up at six o'clock. Yes, you might be tired for the first couple of days to maybe a week, but your body will reset itself. Eat dinner by seven o'clock. Go to bed by 10 o'clock, wake up at six o'clock, light breakfast in the morning. I mean, follow the plan. Like if you do something like the Dr. Ball Detox or just our free smoothie guide or anything like that, choose whatever you want. But if you do that, it will transform your life. It really will. I'm not just saying that and I have nothing to promote. You can use whatever you want, but I'll tell you right now, I've seen it over thousands of appointments in my practice and I've seen it with thousands of more success stories and I just want you to enjoy that same profound results you get from following nature's rhythms. This is not my rhythms. I didn't make them up. It's nature's rhythms. They've obviously been known since the dawn of time. I'm telling you right now, if you follow these things, you will get results. Now, if you want to test your where you're at right now, you can run something called the adrenal and hormone test. It'll actually show you your cortisol spike in the morning, come down around noon, come down around four, down all the way at 10. If your rhythm doesn't look like that, well, then you need help getting back into a natural diurnal rhythm. So I will link that up in the show notes. We teach people all the time based on their lab results how to get back into a natural diurnal rhythm with the help of food, with the help of lifestyle, with the help of nutritional supplements just for a period of about six to 12 weeks. Once they're in it, they stay in it. They keep those results and the results keep compounding themselves. So one of my favorite topics, love Ayurvedic medicine. I hope to create books in the future about Ayurvedic medicine, seminars, I hope to do documentaries. I hope to do all of these things on Ayurvedic medicine in the future. I honestly believe that Ayurvedic medicine, even though it is the ancient original form of medicine, I believe it is the future of medicine as well, combined with functional medicine, which is what my mentor shared with me. And it's what I plan on sharing with all of you. Thank you so much for tuning into the Cabral Concept. I appreciate each and every one of your listens. Thank you so much. And thank you for sharing this show with anyone you believe it could help. Before you go, I wanted to ask you this question. What if I could teach you in just a couple of hours how to transform your thyroid, hormones, adrenal, cholesterol, blood pressure, blood sugar, weight loss, energy, mood, brain, pregnancy, anti-aging, or many other health-related issues? After 20 years in private practice, after seeing and overseeing a quarter of a million client appointments, I sincerely feel I have the real-world data and have found the answer you've been searching for. So what I've done is spent hundreds of hours of my own time refining what you need to know in order to uncover your underlying root cause health issues and then begin to rebalance the body and bring it back to a state of robust health and wellness. I'm going to teach you exactly what I do in my private practice so you can understand how you got here and now what you need to do in order to heal. You'll receive all of the important success checklists, protocols, and even ways to customize it to make the program fit your busy life. And you'll get all of this at a fraction of the price. Let me save you the time, money, energy, stress, and frustration of not knowing what to do next. Instead of reading dozens of books on the topic and seeing multiple practitioners, I will condense everything that you need to know in just a few hours of video tutorials that you can watch and listen to anywhere. Together, we will make this healing process an enjoyable one that you can take with you for the rest of your life. I wish you all of the best of health and happiness, and I hope to be able to guide you on your healing journey through my Health Results Accelerators. Simply choose the health imbalance you're currently suffering from, and by the end of today, you'll know what went wrong and how to get well again. I guarantee it. For details, head over now to stephencabral.com forward slash courses.